hopefully uh, this will be a quick video and uh, it's a response to this individual right here left a comment on this video I did entitled um, September 11th 2024 sundown is day of atonement and we're in uh, September 12th we're in the day of atonement right now and uh, those, those of us that um, believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, we're going to keep the Day of Atonement. Truly believe. That's why Yahweh Shai spoke about the true worshippers that worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That's in the book of John, the fourth chapter. Well, that's something the true worshippers would do. They would keep the Day of Atonement, which is a day where we afflict our souls. Now, you got certain Israelites out there, and this guy is one of them, that... Uh, don't understand the Day of Atonement, nor do they want to keep it, as you see by this com comment here. Their, their understanding is very little. Like I said, and I'll say it again, just because you call yourself a Hebrew Israelite doesn't mean you're a member of the elect, and doesn't mean you've been endowed with, with much understanding of these scriptures, man. Okay? As a matter of fact, uh, when the judgment comes, who's it going to begin with? Those that call themselves Israelites. Okay? If they're not doing the right thing 100%, they're going to be they're going to be deleted, man, by Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. This is from uh, A New Dawn 144. Uh, this individual says, we are not, we are no obligated, it's supposed to say we're not, we are not obligated to a certain day for atonement anymore. Belief in Yahweh Shai's death and rising is your continual atonement. Come on, elders. You're making Israel seek righteousness by the law. Hence, making the Lord's death in vain. <laughs> hey, this is a scripture where it says, A sinful man findeth an excuse according to his will. So maybe this guy is against fasting. Maybe he can't fast. Maybe he's one of them dudes that got to eat every two, three hours. Who knows? Who knows what his boggle, what his boggle is? Look that word up, boggle. So he brings out the scripture, Galatians 2 and 21. I do not frustrate the grace of the heavenly father for if righteousness come by the law, then Yahweh Shai is dead in vain. Oh, so if, well, if that's the case, then um, like Elder Pastor always say, then you can wear a dress with high heels. Why don't you just wear a dress? Hey, you that put this comment, why don't you just wear a dress with high heels? Oh, that's right. You're keeping the law, which the law says not to do so. A man that wears a woman's garment is an abomination to the Lord. If that's the case, don't keep don't keep the Ten Commandments, man. Go out there and commit adultery, right? Isn't that of the law? The law says not to commit adultery. That's why, well, maybe you do commit adultery. Who knows? Okay? The law says thou shalt not kill which really it should say uh, it means thou shalt not murder meaning killing with intention murder it's a big difference between murder and killing but however the law says it don't keep that law then okay don't keep that law just have faith faith in Yahweh Shai don't keep that law you don't understand the concept of faith in Yahweh Shai Yahweh Shai himself kept the law when that man asked Yahweh Shai what shall I do to inherit eternal life what, what did Yahweh Shai tell him he told him to keep the law. And then, then the man said, well, all these things I do, what lack I yet? What he lacked was faith in Yahweh Shai. Faith in Yahweh Shai includes keeping the law to the best of your ability. I guess you forgot the scripture, Judges 5 and 11, which is a prophecy. Judges 5 and 11. Let's read that. And one of those righteous acts is the day, the day of atonement. Judges 5 and 11, they that are delivered from the noise of archers, that's, that's a dark saying for the missiles. The missiles are known as arrows. And what, what, what is a uh, person who shoots arrows? What are they called? An archer. So those missiles are, are known in scripture as arrows, right? It says, they that are delivered from the noise of archers, that's the hopeful elect. They're the only ones that's going to be delivered, Matthew 24 and 30, right? Uh, delivered from the noise of archers, that's the nuclear missiles, in the places of drawing water, that's right here in America, which America is going to be totally destroyed by nuclear destruction and the chariots of the Lord. And the only ones making it out of America is the elect. Point blank in the story. So those that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water, 
there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. What is the righteous acts of the Lord? The law. The law. One of those laws being the day of atonement, the high holy day. So if that's the case, then we ought not to keep the Passover, according to that clown that left that, that comment. That's part of the law. The Passover is part of the law. I guess we make the the the, the death of Yahweh Shai, I guess we make that uh, in vain if we keep the Passover, right? Which is part of the law. All right? Not just the Day of Atonement. Let's not just, let's not keep the Passover. We don't have to keep the Passover. <laughs> See how stupid these individuals are? It says, it says, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. That's the law, people. Even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of, the, of his village, villages in Israel. Then shall the people go down. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Okay, so the point is, it says there in America, which is the places of drawn water, which represents slavery. That's in the book of Joshua, where the Lord said he would make, the, not the Lord, I'm sorry, Joshua said he would make the spies hewers of wood and drawers of water. I mean, and put them in slavery. So this is the place of our slavery, America. So there we would, re, we would do what? We rehearse the righteous acts. Now let's go from there to what the Apostle Paul said. Yea, we have... Do, do we then make void the law through faith, as in faith in Yahweh Shai? Let's, let's read what he said there. Romans, what is that? Romans 3, uh, Romans 3 and 31. Let's go, go to that, the very last verse of that chapter. Romans 3 and 31. <clears throat> it says then, uh, seeing Romans 3 and 30, seeing it is one power, his name is Yahweh, his son's name is Yahweh Shai, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith, right? Um, reading on, let's just get right to the point. Do we then make void the law through faith? Yeah, as in faith in Yahweh Shai. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, meaning no. Yea, we establish the law. So we do. We, we rehearse the righteous acts, like it says in Judges 5 and 11. One of those righteous acts is the Day of Atonement. It's a rehearsal. God damn right we keep the Day of Atonement, man. Let's go back to that clown's comment. So it says, we are, no, we are not obligated to a certain day for atonement anymore, says you. Belief in Yahweh Shai's death and rising is, a, is your continual atonement. Nobody said there's nothing wrong with believing in Yahweh Shai, but even the Apostle Paul said, yea, we establish the law to the best of our ability while we believe in Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai himself kept the law. So what are you talking about? Uh, come on elders you're making Israel seek righteousness by the law hence we don't make void the law okay hence making the Lord's death in vain matter of fact let me go to another scripture let me go to another scripture uh, Romans 6 what was that Romans 6 Romans 6 Romans 6 and 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Right? Under grace to do what? To to learn to try to keep the law. That's what, you see, a lot, you got a lot of individuals that don't even understand that scripture. What it means to be under grace. Under grace to do what? Under grace to learn how to keep the law. Which we won't be able to do it perfectly. That's why we have to be changed. And when we're changed, then we'll keep the law perfectly. That's that's the conditions of the new covenant. You got other Israelites teaching we're under the new covenant right now. No, we're not. You got a lot of ignorance in this nation of ours, man. Because the do you know why? Because the Holy Spirit's not working with these these individuals. That's why. Uh, for sin shall have shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin? What is sin? Transgression of the law. Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid, meaning no. So, so guess what? Not keeping the Day of Atonement is a sin. Not keeping the Day of Atonement is a sin. It's supposed to be a statute throughout all our generations, as it is written, the Day of Atonement. Okay? It says, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves, and that's what the Day of Atonement is, an example of yielding ourselves to Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. It's a day... That Yahweh Shemiah Shai gave us to afflict our souls, right? 
we afflict our souls every day, but there's, the, the, well, it tells you in the Apocrypha, there are certain days that are, that are more hallowed than others. Have you not read that? It's in the Apocrypha. Every day is not alike. There are certain days that are more hallowed than others. Now, according to the law, the uh, tenth day of the seventh month is a day of atonement where we're supposed to afflict our souls. How can you not see that? Well, I know why you can't see it, because the Holy Spirit's not dealing with you. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants, and we are servants, to obey, right? To obey is better than what? Sacrifice, to obey. Uh, his servants, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You see that? So we're, we're supposed to obey. We're given a, a, a commandment, a law to obey. We're supposed to obey. Okay? Let's go back to the comment. So he puts the scripture which he uh, doesn't understand that scripture. I do not frustrate the grace of the Heavenly Father for if righteousness <coughs> come by the law, then Yahweh is dead in vain. Doesn't, doesn't excuse you from keeping the law. Galatians 2 and 21 doesn't excuse you from keeping the law. Romans 3 and 31 says, Yea, we establish the law, which means we establish the high holy days, and one of them is the Day of Atonement, along with the Passover and other high holy days that we were given. Uh, then he quotes uh, Romans 5, 11 to 13. Um, let's see. And not only so, but we also joy in Yahweh through our Lord Yahweh Shai, by whom we have now received the atonement. No one's not saying Yahweh Shai didn't bring us atonement. Of course. But there's a day of atonement that we're supposed to follow. That is part of the law. Like the Apostle Paul said, yea, we established the law. Now, the only law that Yahweh Shai did away with and that's explained in Hebrews, the 8th and ninth chapter, is the law of sacrifice, as an animal sacrifice. That we don't have to do. We, we, we sacrifice our own selves. We're a living sacrifice unto Yahweh Bashim Yashai. That's in Romans, the 12th chapter. So we don't have to do uh, animal sacrifice like we used to do in the, in the past, uh, sacrificing turtle doves and lambs and sheep. And it, it tells you all of that couldn't compete with the blood of Yahweh Shai. That's in Hebrews, the 8th chapter, going into the ninth chapter. That's why we don't do it. But everything else we try to do to the best of our ability, man. And if that's the case, if the law is done away with according to you, then don't keep the Ten Commandments then. Go out there, commit adultery. Go out there, commit uh, murder. Go out there, commit... Uh, hell, you, worship, you can worship uh, any God that you want to. That's part of the law. The Lord said uh, in Exodus 20... Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's that the, the Ten Commandments opens up with that. Don't keep that law then. If it's about just having faith in Yahweh Shai and not, not um, uh, establishing the law to the best of your ability. What are you talking about, man? It says, uh, Wherefore, uh, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, and for all for that all have sinned, and for until the law of sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law, right? We no longer atone with a day. We atone through our belief in the Lord's death and resurrection and his doctrine, right? And the, our Lord himself kept the law. Did you forget that? He kept the law himself. He wasn't above the law. He himself kept the law, okay? He kept the Passover, all right? He himself was the Passover. So I replied to this knucklehead with this comment here. And we're going to go to that scripture too. Leviticus 23 and 31. What part of throughout, and this was a day ago I replied to that knucklehead. What part of throughout your generations in all your dwellings don't you comprehend? Three people thumbed it up, so I'm, I myself am going to thumb it up. And then... then uh, Somebody put uh, Dreamer 144. I might be the same person as New Dawn 144. Might be. I don't know. Uh, came back with this. 2 Corinthians 3 and 12. See, and then we have such hope. We use great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over, over his face. That the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Right. The, what was a, the the law was not up to see. He put he's, he's putting uh, uh, pointing fingers to the word abolish, as if the law, the law was not abolished. Yahweh Shai didn't abolish the law. 
Yahweh Shai himself said, Matthew 5 and 17, he, he came to fulfill the law. Doesn't mean the law is, <laughs> man, you sound like a wacky tacky Christian. Doesn't mean the law is abolished. Matthew 5 and 17, think not that I am come to destroy the law. So if he didn't come to destroy the law, guess what? The law still stands. There's certain laws that are done away with, like the law, the law of animal sacrifice. That's done away with. We don't need to do that. Yahweh Shai replaced that. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. All right? Right. Fulfill everything that was written about Yahweh Shai in the law. He came to fulfill it. Didn't, didn't say it. The scripture didn't say he come to abolish the law. All right? Um, again, even the Apostle Paul said, uh, the Apostle Paul said, yea, we established the law. Okay? 2 Corinthians 3 and 14, but their minds were blinded. Your mind is blinded, man. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away with in Yahweh Shai. See, he doesn't understand that. As if Yahweh Shai did away with the law. Yahweh Shai didn't come to do away with the law. Yahweh Shai himself told that, that man that desired to be perfect, Yahweh Shai himself told him to keep the law. Okay? Yahweh Shai himself kept the law. <laughs> Second Corinthians 3 and 15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Then he goes out with, what's hard to comprehend? Question, Gabal. What Lord have we turned to is the question. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's see. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that which believe not. Hey, you're a non-believer. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Yahweh, which is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. So it's obvious this guy thinks that Yahweh did away with the law. Like I said, if that's the case, then don't keep the Ten Commandments. <laughs> you can you who left this comment, you can go out there and wear wear dress and high high heel high heel sneakers, man. High heel shoes. Right? Why don't you do it? Oh, that's right. It's against the law. Oh, why don't you become a mo? Right? Just be a mo. Okay? <laughs> oh, that's right. It's against the law. Come on, man. Even the, there's a scripture where it says we, we shall even live in the law. Let me see. Shall do them. The law, the law is a schoolmaster. As it is written, the law is a schoolmaster to bring us unto Yahweh Shai. Have you not read that? Now, just because the law brings you to Yahweh Shai doesn't mean Yahweh Shai himself would not tell you to away the law. Or don't keep the law, my son. Just believe in me. Have you not read faith without works is dead? What is the works? The law. Faith without works is dead, man. What did James say? I'll show you my, my faith by my works. You don't have no faith, man. That's why you don't want to keep the Day of Atonement. Like I said, maybe you're one of those guys you got to eat every two hours. Eating junk food. <laughs> Pizza and fried chicken and all that crap. Uh, let me get the one in James. Then I'll try to find the other one. Uh, damn, how's it go? Um, show you my faith. Show you my faith. Come on. By my works, by my works. There it is right here. Yeah, there you go. This is for you, guy. You're talking about, oh, we just need to have faith in Yahweh Shai. Well, here's the book of James 2 and 17. Even so, faith, you got faith in Yahweh Shai, right? If it have not works, what do you think the works is talking about, my guy? It's talking about the law, the same law you, you're trying to prove that Yahweh Shai did away with, as in the law of the Day of Atonement. That's law. Day of Atonement is law, buddy. It's in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus, you, you do know the word Leviticus means law, right? Or maybe you don't know that. The Hebrew word there for, for Levi is lawyer, which means join to me. Okay? That law, the, the high holy day of, of the Day of Atonement, is located in the book of Leviticus. And it's, it's part of the law. Okay? Even so, faith it have if it have 
if it if it have not works which goes takes us back to the law is dead being alone so your faith is dead dude talking about you have faith in Yahweh Shai. your faith is dead you have dead faith yea a man may say thou hast faith and I have works there you go show me thy faith without thy works that's what you're trying to show Oh, we don't have to keep the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is done away with. Okay. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will, this is me, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So yes, I'm going to keep the Day of Atonement because it's part of the works, because I have faith. I have faith that I'll survive 24 hours without eating or drinking. Maybe you don't have faith. <laughs> Maybe you don't have faith that you'll survive 24 hours without eating or drinking. Maybe you're a fat slob that just can't stop eating, man. Well, there are guys that have, we have willpower, right? It takes willpower to keep the Day of Atonement. You know, you remind me of them women, man. Women, I can understand a woman having that attitude. My ex-demon, she couldn't keep the Day of Atonement, okay? Uh, now, let me get the other one. Shall live in the law. Let me see if I can find that. That's a powerful scripture, too shall live by them uh let's see no that's not what i want shall live by them the man that does them shall live by yeah that's it oh this is a good one here but that's not the one i want leviticus 18 and 5 keep my statues and my judgments ye shall therefore Keep my statues and my rules. If a person does them, he shall live by them. I am the Lord. Right. 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 That's a good one. That's a good one. Leviticus 18 and 5. Right. Galatians 3 and 12. Okay. So, so let's go to Leviticus 18 and 5 and then Galatians 3 and 12. First Leviticus 18 and 5. Let's get that. Leviticus 18 and 5. It started for, Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your power. His name is Yahweh. You shall therefore keep my statues and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. That's right. And one of his statues, before we go to Galatians 3, let's go to the statue, as in the Day of Atonement. Let's go to Leviticus 23, because it's one of the statues. Leviticus 23. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Leviticus 23 and... Uh, where are we going to go? Leviticus 23 and... Twenty-three and yeah. twenty-three and and twenty-six. This is under the Day of Atonement, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, "Also unto the also on the tenth day of the seventh month, which we're in right now." There shall be a day of atonement. It shall be in a holy convocation unto you. And you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now the offering is ourself. We don't have to. Now that part is done away with the, as an animal sacrifice. We don't have to do that. We're the animals that are being sacrificed. Uh, Romans 12 and 1 brings that out. Off of, as a matter of fact, let's get it. Romans 12 and 1. For those of you that are new, dedicated service, a living sacrifice to the Heavenly Father, that's us. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of our power, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So we're the sacrifice. We don't, we don't have to do animal sacrifice anymore. We're the animals being sacrificed. We are animals, you know. Uh, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. So it's our reasonable service to keep the Day of Atonement, man. What's wrong with that clown? Oh, you, you, you don't want to keep the Day of Atonement? You're that weak? Leviticus 23 and... 
27 again, and on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. We don't have to do that. We're the offering. Romans 12 and 1. And ye shall do no work in that same day. A lot of brothers took the day off. Good for them. That, that's a sign of faith. For it is a day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your power. There are certain days that are more hallowed than others. Okay, it tells you that in the Apocrypha. The Day of Atonement is one of them. It's a very serious day, a solemn day. For whatsoever soul, now listen to, listen to this, you that left that comment. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Hey, how about Shemi Hashem? I might take your ass out, man. And I don't mean out to dinner either. <laughs> And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Now, the Heavenly Father understands that certain guys that have to work on the Day of Atonement. The scriptures speak about that. If your ox is in the ditch, then you have to do what you have to do to get it out. Okay? The 31st, the, 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 the 31st verse, Ye shall do no manner of work, it shall be a statute, forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings that even includes up until now <clears throat> up until now man we're supposed to do it the day of atonement okay <clears throat> excuse me it shall be unto you a sabbath day of rest and ye shall afflict your souls ye shall afflict your souls okay ye shall afflict your souls. Now let's go from there to uh, Isaiah the 58 chapter because Isaiah 58 goes into it. <clears throat> Isaiah 58 and uh, let's see where we're going to start here. Isaiah 58 because it talks about that fast that we do on the Day of Atonement. Isaiah 58 and uh, the third verse. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. This, this it sounds like this guy is trying to get out of that fast. Well, we don't have to do a day of atonement. Wherefore have we afflicted our souls? It's a day of afflicting our soul, right? And thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high doesn't say we're not supposed to do the fast because let's keep reading is it such a fast that i have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul that's the day of atonement is it to bow down his head as a bulrush to humble himself and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him right to be in a state of mourning will thou call this a fast an acceptable day to the lord is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, that ye break every yoke? Okay, so this is a fast. <clears throat> this is a fast that the Heavenly Father have called for, man. All right, Isaiah 58 and 5 in the NLT. You humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds being in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourselves with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this will please the Lord? No, this is the kind of fast I want. Okay? This is the kind of fast I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that binds the people. Okay? Because you had you back then you had individuals even now that do, do the fast and being hypocrites. Doesn't say we're not supposed to do the fast. Okay. Matter of fact, let's 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 uh, let's um, even Yahweh Shai himself said uh, the days come when we when we will have to fast. Matter of fact, let me type in that the Lord says, 
children of children of the bride chamber. Or is it the bridegroom? Let me type in bridegroom, see if it comes up. Bear with me for a minute. I don't get, I gotta find this scripture here. Yeah, hey, hey. oh, 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 wait a minute, there it is right here. Matthew 9 and 14, the question about fasting. What is the day of atonement? It's a day of fasting. All right, it's a, it's a day of, of, of fasting. Then came to him the disciples of John saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? And Yahweh said unto them, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? Yeah, Yahweh was with them. That's why that's why they didn't have to fast, his disciples, which became apostles. Why did they have to fast? Yahweh was with Everything they need was with them at that time. Yahweh he was with them. That's why they didn't need to fast. But the days will come, listen good, you that left that comment, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them. Was not the bridegroom taken from us? That's Yahweh Shai. We're waiting for him to return, right? Uh, the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast, as in the day of atonement. Then shall they fast. Fasting is good, man. Why are you, why are you against fasting, man? Now, let's go from there to Joel 3 and 9. That just came to mind. Joel 3 and 9. You always got these Israelites with all these excuses. All these excuses, man. To be wicked and then use scripture to justify their ignorance. Joel, the third chapter, and what is that? The ninth verse? Let's read that. Joel 3 and 9. Or oh, is it 10? No. No, I'm sorry. Joel 2. Joel 2. Joel, the second chapter, the ninth verse, I believe it is. Joel 2. What does that say? Or oh, is it Joel 2 and 12? Yeah. Look at the subheading here, a call to repentance, right? Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn you even to me. Have we not turned to the Heavenly Father? Yahweh Shemiashai. Turn you even to me with all your heart, meaning with all our minds, and with fasting. With fasting. <laughs> what is that? The day of atonement is a day of fasting. And with fasting. And with weeping. And with mourning, and rend your heart, not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your power, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repent of him of the evil. So what's wrong with doing the Day of Atonement fast, huh? The Lord said to turn to him with fasting. Let's read that in the NLT. This is why the Lord, this is why the Lord says, turn you to me, or turn to me now, while there is time, while there is time, give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. What don't you get about that? What is the day of atonement? It's a day of fasting. So you're wrong, man. You are wrong, sir. You better reevaluate your stance. Lisa Harbaugh Shimia Shai tear you in pieces. Anyway, that's it. See you in the next video.